quick announcement. As ushers, we were negligent in reminding everyone that we will be processing this morning. So if you want to meet out in the courtyard, I think we'll do the procession and then come into the church. Thank you. Let us pray. Mercifully, whereby you have given us life and immortality, and we ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples. who were sent departed and found it as he had told them, as they were untying the cot. Its owners asked them, Why are you untying the cot? They said, The Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the cot, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. Beloved, the Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along. These branches be for us, signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life 
and who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We didn't? <laughs> Don't say that.
Good morning and blessings to you on this Palm Sunday. We begin our journey of Holy Week with our Lord Jesus, and we enter the Holy City of Jerusalem today. We're on page three in our bulletins. Beloved, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering, we also may share in his resurrection. And we ask this through the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please do sit for the readings. And if someone at the back would like to close the west doors, that would be helpful. reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to stain the weary with a word. With a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced, therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me, who will declare me guilty. Hear what the Spirit is saying.
A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks be to God. O to the Son of David, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. O King of readers, those of you who've volunteered to read, when it comes to your part, if you just stand up wherever you're sitting and read loudly, that will be wonderful. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate, and they began to accuse Jesus, saying, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, Mind, mind, no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, from Galilee, where he began even to this place. When Pilate had heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that Jesus were under Herod's jurisdiction, Pilate sent Jesus off to Herod, who himself was in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about Jesus and was hoping to see him perform some sign. Herod questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod, with his soldiers, treated Jesus with contempt and mocked him. Then Herod put an elegant robe on Jesus and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Then Pilate called together the chief priests, the leaders and the people and said to them, Then the elders all shouted out together, Away with this fellow. Release Barabbas for us. Barabbas was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate 
wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again. But they kept shouting, And a third time, Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I would have found him in the ground of the sins of death. I will therefore have him caught and then release him. But the elders kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that Jesus should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. Pilate released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed over Jesus as they wished. As they led Jesus away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the womb that never bore, and the breast that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For in daily days, when the wood is free, what will happen when it is free of God? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to put to death with Jesus. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, Messiah of God, the chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over Jesus that read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there, kept deriding Jesus and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and die. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are guilty. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light faded. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what were taking place, he praised God and said, And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all Jesus' acquaintances, 
including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things. Listen in wonder when the owls land in our trees, when the finches bathe in the baths in our gardens, to stop in awe when the bald eagles land in the field in which we are standing. God, grant us the sure knowing that as we feel our breath moving in and out of our bodies, we are brought ever closer to our natural state and connection to the most holy of creations, our blessed Mother Earth. God, grant us the words to exalt with bountiful praise the knowledge of the great, abundant, ever-flowing love of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Most glorious Creator, today we go beyond our pain and suffering and gloriously expand into joy and extravagant, passionate welcome. Amen. Amen. Candidly, when I was writing this sermon, I joked with my family that I was going to start out with, so how was the wilderness? For me, I was giving up taking stress out on my family for Lent. So every single day, I was giving many opportunities to do so. Be careful what you wish for, I joked with my daughter Gwen nearly every single day these last few weeks. All humor aside, the last several weeks have been so profoundly transformational and clarifying, filled with such depth and insight. I feel like a veil has lifted. I hope that all of you have had such an experience as well. I love this day. It is a beautiful reminder that in joy and celebration, we return to our natural state of being an imperfect creation of the Creator themselves. I love this day because it reminds us that although we are celebrating the arrival of Jesus into Jerusalem, He knows what is coming, and we do too. It gives us an opportunity to engage in faith, deep faith. I love this day because it is such a glorious invitation to release the wounding and perfection in reminders that we are all the glorious children of God and that we are all messy, celebrated bits of humanity made in his image. I love this day. It is such a kindness to be reminded that in emptying ourselves of surety and the need to control, we connect deeper to our inner divinity and the gifts of our intuition that were given to us by God. Close your eyes for a moment and feel your breath move in and out of your body. Imagine that you are watching Jesus take, make his way into Jerusalem. For the next few moments, allow yourself to put aside the troubles of the world and be present in the heart of God and the passion of the Christ. As you breathe in and out, Imagine the wonder of knowing that on this day and for all days, in trusting God, you will experience the powerful exaltation of the Lord. As you breathe in and out, be curious about what it will feel like to dig deeper into joyful, abundant happiness and find different meanings for your life. Dear God, Thank you for showing us that out of darkness and wandering comes great healing and transformation. 
Thank you for giving us 40 days of opportunities to practice our lives. And remember that faith is not just a pretty word, but an action that expands our lives into great and endless possibility. Dear God, thank you for reminding us that paradise is everywhere around us when we commend our spirit to trust and have faith in your vision. Dear God, thank you for putting into spoken and written word that when we celebrate, love is expressed, divine love is ecstatic, and we all receive the collective benefits of that love. Dear God, please help us to surrender to your divine calling for each one of us and help us to remember that we are not at fault that our bodies are the vessels of the soul and we are here to give our souls a human experience of vast and abundant imperfection. Lord, allow us to see now that our grasping for power and control is driven by a fear of loss of love, a love that cannot be lost because it is yours. In this passionate celebration, we see that when we have faith by welcoming Jesus into our hearts and our minds, perfection becomes unnecessary because we are already made in your loving image. We are loved and we are loved after all. Lord, in our willingness to follow him and embracing our unique gifts that you have given us, we return to our natural state and live in connection to the most holy creation of the Mother Earth. We are the web. We are the collective. And so as we move into this most holy of weeks, let us all pray. Lord, help us to remember that we must trust what we think is right, because really that is all that we can do. Help us to remember that when we do the best we can with the information that we have, our faith is deepened and our ability to surrender is magnified. Lord, help us to remember that our ability to move through difficulties depends on our willingness to move through them with ease. Regardless of the level of grief or joy that we experience with each decision that we make, Help us to remember that we are a part of the web of life and we are here having a human experience, not separate from that web, but together. And in that web weaving, we are beautifully and fully imperfect in your vision. Help us to remember that even when we think the entire world is collapsing around us and we will not be able to carry on, there is always an opening. There is always love, and while we might not be able to see it right away, the light is always there waiting for us to walk through it. Splendidly, rapturously, gloriously yours. Amen. Shall we stand as we're able? We're on page nine in our bulletins. Christ Jesus was obedient unto death on a cross and exalted by God. He continues to plead for all humankind. Let us join Jesus in prayer for all our sisters and brothers saying, Lord, we place our lives in your hands. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Establish peace and friendship among Earth's peoples. Let violence and enmity give way to love and peace. Lord, we place our lives in your hands. Lord, hear our prayer. Renew your church's longing for the reign of justice. May Christians work together to establish what is right in your eyes. Lord, we place our lives in your hands. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant a share in Christ's exaltation to all who share his degradation, especially to those whose poverty and helplessness are exploited by the powerful. Lord, we place our lives in your hands. Lord, hear our prayer. Heal the wounds which money and crime has inflicted on our cities and help us to fashion a society based on trust and respect. Lord, we place our lives in your hands. Lord, hear our prayer. Open our eyes to the pain we have caused. May our repentance lead us to seek forgiveness and restore us to the paradise of your presence. Lord, we place our lives in your hands. Lord, hear our prayer. And we lift to the Lord God the prayers and concerns of our own hearts and lives. Prayers for Susan and Ron, Pat, Dick and Mary, Wendy, for the people of Ukraine. for all those struggling because of COVID. Father, the prayer of Christ brought forgiveness to those who crucified him, and the prayer of the thief brought him a place with Christ at your side. Hear the prayers we now make to you and sustain your people in their need. And we make our prayers through Christ, our crucified Lord. Amen. Amen. Beloved, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please, you're welcome to sit for a moment. As we enter this journey of Holy Week, there are a number of things uh, that, are, that will take place in and around Good Sam in the next week or so. Uh, all of the special events and liturgies for Holy Week and Easter are on the website and also in the Wednesday emails. If you are not sure about something, uh, then please do call or uh, be in touch with us at the office and we will... Uh, we will try to give you the information that you need. But every day this week there is something going on, so, uh, so please do journey with us. Today, uh, apart from being Palm Sunday, is also the day of our Episcopal Church Women Bake Sale. Uh, if you have time before you go home, uh, do please uh, wander into Simpson Hall and you will see a vast array of low-calorie wonders. <laughs> and all the proceeds uh, are for charity, so, uh, so it's all in a good cause. Please do uh, be generous and, and take some goodies home with you today. Let us walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
shall we stand as we're able. Page 10 and following in our bulletins. Jesus has longed to celebrate this Passover with us, and he feeds us with himself, the living bread. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to be It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who for sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Saviour and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, 
he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of his Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, Bring all things to completion in your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with Mary, your mother, with Mary Magdalene, with Peter, James, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory is yours, O Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Jesus taught us and prays with us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread.
Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. You're welcome to sit comfortably until John or Ruth invites you forward to receive communion. Everyone today is welcome to receive. Uh, we have ordinary bread and we also have gluten-free wafers. If you would prefer gluten-free, please do remind me when you come forward to receive.
I invite you to stand as you're able. Page 14. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Please do join us in our journey this Holy Week. And also, if you would like to take extra palm crosses for friends or neighbors or loved ones, we have lots. So please take extra if you would like. And so the blessing for this Palm Sunday. May Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and touch all whom you love pray for this day and for all days. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.